Hey, good morning, Lawrence McKendall. Uh, this is Scuberlicious Ultimate, and this is on a overcast Sunday morning in Oakland, California, coming from the Hudson Cafe in the corner of College Avenue in Hudson in Oakland. And my guest today is the executive and new executive director of Barry Disassociation, Jen Pashley. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Awesome. And this is going to be a nice interview, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I just want to say one shout out to VC Ultimate. They gave me this really cool Buffalo shirt uh, from a college tournament and just wanted to give them a shout out and thank you. So without further ado, Jen Pashley. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, I wanted to ask you one question. Sure. I know you're a baller. Um, they just had the, uh, the Masters Championships in Aurora. Mm-hmm. Um, is there going to be a time we're going to the, the tournament's going to see you there or trying to get there? I hope so. Yeah, this year um, is still kind of a wild year, and I just wasn't <laughs> emotionally, mentally, physically ready to play so much ultimate in such a tiny amount of sure. time. So I hope to return in 2022. Nice. And I hope- so, so there's a, a few topics I want to talk about. We just got done with COVID, and COVID was a, a weird period of time for many of us, yeah. and Ultimate Frisbee sort of took a hiatus, and uh, maybe that's an understatement. And uh, slight one. And throughout the process, uh, as we were, you know, going through this, everybody in our own different way, I was thinking about what was happening with Bata. I'm sure there was a a, a a WTF moment for like, you know, how are they navigating these waters? What will play look like? Uh, and you know, and there's a lot of other topics. Jen became the executive director. Yeah. So so walk me through the COVID situation Mm -hmm. as it was sort of descending on the organization. What did that look like? And I'm curious about the next level of what did the transition look like? Sure. Okay. Um, You know, I think one, uh, it's hard to remember exactly what happened with COVID. Uh, (laughs) Just time feels so strange in that moment. But I distinctly remember in March of 2020, um, you know, we realized that things were shutting down. Um, Tournaments were being canceled. Uh, People were really concerned about events. Um, You know, COVID was spreading pretty rapidly. And so for us, it was like, okay, what do we do in the immediate term? So we started canceling all of our programs. um, And for us, we were sort of on a similar mindset as a lot of people of, we may just have to shut down for a couple of weeks or like a month like we c- we can run summer programming sure. we can do this that and the other and it just i think by june it was late may early june it was like oh no this is this is gonna be a while so we started switching course and saying well how can we make sure that whenever this is done we can come back and provide the programming that people need um and and resume programming so that like there are opportunities to play team sports um and in the meantime uh how do we make sure we stay afloat um and what can we do behind the scenes to be as prepared for that return to play as possible so so bad is in this situation and then mike decides to step down step away What what did that look like? Yeah. um, You know, I think one of the things that... By the way, Mike McGirt, solid guy. He was executive director for Barry a Disc. Um, So, please. Helpful context. There's also a million mics in the world. So it's like, which mic are we talking about? Great guy. Um, Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, it was one of those moments of um, what are the options presented to us? What we'll make sure that both you know mike is and i you know to preface like i don't certainly don't want to speak for him um sure. but i can certainly speak to what i saw you know i saw someone who was weighing all of the options was prioritizing the organization first and foremost was making sure that his entire staff was being supported and you know for him i think it was just sort of an interesting transition moment in his life of like i think this might just be the best option while also knowing that you know he has a lot of faith in his staff and i think he saw that there was um a lot of folks who could step into those roles um and continue to 
uh, push the organization forward. So. And so the scepter is bestowed <laughs> upon you. <laughs> After being, um, well, I mean, there's, there's slightly steps more the democratic of than course, that, of but course. yes. After being voted in by the board, yes, I took over in late September as the new executive director. Um, and this, of course, comes after, gosh, months of, or weeks and multiple meetings with Mike of, like, what everything looks like. He did a phenomenal job transitioning everything in his brain into my brain. So I felt prepared stepping into that role. So, Jen, when you had the luxury of this time to really look over the landscape of BATA, yeah. what were some of the revelations that you, that you, what were revealed in the process? Yeah, I think, you know, for us, there was, now that we weren't running, you know, 100 programs in a year, as much as we knew anecdotally some pieces about, um, you know, programs are good, but they're not, I think there are still issues that folks faced while participating in our programs where they're like, I don't feel super welcome. I don't feel super invited. I don't feel like this is the best. Pl I don't feel like this is a home for me. Was it, did this come from a questionnaire? Or did this come from me? How did you get how did you get this information? Yeah. So uh, we actually did an equity survey in June of 2020. Okay. And so that supported a lot of the anecdotal information that we had been looking at or thinking about. Um, and so for us in this moment of no programming um, and not doing the things that, that we normally do, um, for us it was like, okay, how do we intentionally restructure what we're doing or reframe what we're doing or reinvent what we're doing to do better, right? Um, how do we make programs better for our community, both you know, past, present, and future? So with that revelation, by the way, this is Jen Tosh, the executive director of Bay Area Disc Association. We're coming from the San Francisco Bay Area. We're in Oakland on the Hudson Cafe and just catching you up here. So, so you're looking at all these things. Yep. Wh where did you decide with this new information to sort of tack yeah. BATA into, the wa into new waters? New waters are ex constantly to, you know, grow roots into and strengthen the existing uh, For sure. direction. For us, you know, for me, sort of like starting to lead the reins, particularly, you know, after September when I was um, voted in as ED, it was uh, how do we make sure that we're focusing on our core mission of serving new and recreational players? Um, and how do we make sure that we are both changing the culture of our community so that it is more welcoming to new folks? Um, and so for us, like, as much as I would love BATA to be the, like, we do everything, I just don't think that, that is feasible. And I also think there's other phenomenal people in this community who can do that work as well. So, for example, when we were looking at Youth Ultimate, um, you know, we run everything from summer camps for brand new kids yep. all the way up to elite level YCC club teams and right. you know taking a look at that and assessing what are our resources um, we said hey you know as much as we love our YCC program the kids are amazing I, I love those kids so much they are phenomenal athletes and human beings I just don't think BATA is the best place for this program and so we actually had a moment of uh, revelation, as you said, and thought, you know, I think there could be another organization that takes on this program and does it even bigger and better than we could ever do. And so that's where Booyah came in and they, you know, <laughs> formed and created in the middle of a pandemic. Um, but it was some... You know, it's it's led by some amazing humans. Um, you know, Slap and Puma and Lindy um, and Slap is Manisha Daryani. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you. And okay. you know, Eli and Marcella, like yep. they're just phenomenal nice. community members. So that's cool. Yeah. So Our hope is to build a pipeline. Like I think having 
as many different opportunities for folks yeah. as possible yeah. of where they feel most excited to play yeah. um, in a very holistic way of, you know, maybe YCC kids come back and coach at summer camps. And it's nice. like a very synergy, you know, it's a good synergy. It's a yeah. good circle of ultimates. Yeah. And for me, like we can't do this work alone. Yeah. And so I really cherish and love meaningful and deep partnerships, particularly with groups and organizations that align in our mission yep. and serve our players. So for Booyah, it's, you know, how do we make sure that there are enough kids who can go up into these higher level elite playing opportunities? Um, and how do we make sure that kids are not being burnt out? Um, they're not being told there's like four different events at the same time. So we want to make sure that we work together yeah. to best serve the players. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. You have to wave a wand. Your one year, five year plan. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if you have to step back from your career with, with BATA. Yeah. But, you know, just I, ideally, what would you like to see the landscape look like for BATA? For sure. I think in the short term, you know, my objective is to, like, we need to sort of get back on the path, right? Um, I think we were probably shoved forcefully off the path during the pandemic. Um, and so now it's like, okay, we're a little lost in the woods. Like, let's try and get back to where we wanted to be. Um, in the long term, you know, I think one of the things that I also of like, I I would love to have an impact on what the culture of Bay Area Ultimate looks like. Um, and I think that's a really cool thing as executive director to be able to mold and shape. Um, and I think with all of the other really awesome folks in the community, we can get there. So. Yeah. Very cool. I yeah. like that. And also, you became an author. I did. An author. I did. Why now? Mm -hmm. And why the, the, the conduit that you chose to yeah. be the author? For sure. And so I will leave this cliffhanger on. Thank to, you. Yeah, take it away. <laughs> I love it. Lies. Thank you. Yeah. I think, I, you know, I've always dabbled okay. in writing articles or story you know like your things style by I've, the way yeah thank i like you. your I've, tone yep, so like, I've, I've dabbled a little bit in the like sharing the ramblings that go on in my brain um and <laughs> i think one of the things that i've really um learned a lot in the past few years particularly uh having founded and run you know our girls program um which is a leadership program for athletes in high school is the power of your story and the power of your voice. And so, yeah, so I um, have been feeling for a long time the uh, need personally to uh, write a piece about who I was and my identity. And the long journey of two words is basically about sort of my decades long uh, quest to discover um, who I am as a gay woman, right? And so for me, like, I wrote it in June. It was sort of a um, reflection during Pride Month about who I was. And um, so for me, it was it was an opportunity to share an, a piece of who I was that not necessarily everyone knew about. Right. I mean, why now? What yeah. was the imp Why did you feel the need that, you know what, this, this part of me needs to be shared? Yeah. Um, I think as a leader in our community, um, there I felt an obligation to talk about who I was and um, share who I was in as my authentic self. Um, and so, as executive director, and to you know to come out as a queer woman and share that journey and talk about the struggles I faced and. Uh, be able to um, be real about who I was. I wanted to make sure that anyone else going through that journey saw someone and said, okay, I, there's someone else, right? Um, and as an executive director, that was an important piece yeah. for me. So the, the, the one question I have for you is why did you feel you wanted to go big? You didn't yeah. go with a pamphlet. Yeah. You did. Yeah. But you went, you went to a bigger forum. I did. And, um, you know, I think I was in a place in my life where I did feel very safe to share that, you know, with my job, with where I lived, with my family and friends already knowing. Um, I wanted to 
you know, I'm, I'm kind of awkward sometimes when I talk to people. And so I never knew when to segue or mention this important piece about who I was in <laughs> normal okay. conversations. Sure. Right. And so, uh, writing is, I found writing to be a really wonderful, healthy outlet for me. And so, uh, being able to write an article and take my time with it and really think about how I wanted to share this story and in what way um, made it a really safe thing. Um, and so for me, it was like ripping off the Band-Aid Red. I was like, this is what it is. Here we go, press send. Um, so it was exciting to be able to do that and have uh, the platform to do it as well. So the question I have is, how long did you look at it before you press send? A month. Yeah. yeah, it was a full, I started writing it in early June, um, and I published it, I think, the last day of June. Yeah. So it, it went through many iterations um, with um, my little sister being my editor, and she's a phenomenal human and um, someone who really gets my voice. But it, it took a while, but I felt really good about where it was when right. I did Press Send. Well, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you sharing your story. And this Thank is you. just an example of the variety of stories in the Bay Area, let alone within the Ultimate Frisbee community. And uh, Jen Pashley is firmly entrenched in the livelihood of Ultimate Frisbee. And I appreciate you. Thank and thank you. you for being on the show and sharing what's going on with Bata in your life. So this is going to conclude this segment of Scoobalicious Ultimate coming live from, not live, but coming from the Hudson Cafe in Oakland, California, College of, on the corner of College and Hudson. Come on and join a beautiful cup of coffee, nice venue. And, uh, uh, but Lawrence McKendall, Jen Pashley, Scoobalicious is out.